Hey folks, it's time for Eagle Prepper. I got this uh, 2008 Hyundai Santa Fe. I'm going to diagnose this with the Pico or attempt to. Um, so what we got is uh, cylinder five as a misfire code. So uh, the, the customer complaint was um, it takes forever to get up to 35 miles an hour. And when I stop, it shakes. So I'm thinking, oh, something with the brake hanging out or something. But no, it's got a definite hard misfire. Um, and so when I took it for a drive, no check engine light. Um, but I could feel the misfire. Um, and the vibration is like after you stop. So from the engine shaking. Um, so um, that took me away from the brakes. It does sound like it has maybe about wheel bearing or something going on, but that's beyond the point um, so um, I went ahead and uh, uh, scanned the computer even though there was no check engine light because when I turned a key on I didn't have a check engine light well sure enough it has codes the check engine lights obviously burned out or unplugged or something so um, and it's got a 305 PO 305 misfire code for cylinder 5 and so um, it's most likely a coil pack um, this is, I don't know how many miles it's got, but it's an 08. It's never had its tune up. It's never had the coils replaced. And so uh, what we're going to do is um, I don't have a coil on plug adapter or probe. So I'm just going to check the primary ignition on it. I'm going to see um, if we're getting, I'm going to test a good plug first and look at the primary ignition waveform on that. And then we'll check the bad one and see if we're at least getting signal or what's going on there. Uh, See if we're just getting like a little blip where the computer's turning on, but the coil on plug isn't uh, responding. Or if we're getting, you know, something else that shows like it's a bad spark plug or a leaky spark or something like that. But, um, you know, it's bad news for the customer because they only had a couple hundred bucks and this intake manifold right here has to come off in order to get to those back plugs. But I can slip a probe onto the connector for the uh, coil on plug and we can verify that that's what's wrong that um, I already did just a sound cranking test the compression sounds fine I don't think we have a compression issue make sure we're not seeing a normal waveform there and we've got an injector shutdown issue or something either one of those would still require pulling that intake off but the problem is I want to diagnose this because I don't want to pull the intake off, make the repair, put it back together and still have a misfire because it's actually a dead fuel injector. Because then I got hours tearing that intake back off again and I can't just put the plug on there and test it. So this is one of those situations where a scope really comes in handy and you can make a confirmed diagnosis and get a cost to the customer. Okay, so first I'm just going to uh, launch the Pico Scope 6 Automotive right here. This is the software that I installed for the scope. And then uh, what I found is we want to come here to Automotive up here and we want to say uh, we're going to go to Ignitions. And then we're gonna go to coil on plug and primary voltage to wire right there. Brings up a sample waveform as to what it should kind of look like. And then it should bring up in the web browser the instructions. And so it tells you this is for a 20 to 1 attenuator. If you're using a 10 to 1 attenuator, you can change the settings. Now the Pico scope I got comes with a 10 to 1. I installed this uh, Hantec 20 to 1 um, and I've got my probe 
hooked into the control side of the coil and I've got a ground right here. So this is what I'm seeing that you're supposed to do, I do believe. Let me look. So plug the 2021 attenuator, channel A. Let's make this full screen. Um, okay, so uh, plug the BNC test lead into place a large crocodile clip on the black test wire negative a, and a small red crocodile clip on the colored test plug positive. Place a black crocodile clip to the battery negative terminal and probe the coils negative or number one terminal with the small red crocodile clip. So the coils negative is going to be the control side because the coil shorts that to negative. So when I look here, I've got a green wire, green wire, and a green wire. Well, I have green wires on all my coils. And then there's a different color wire. That different color wire should be the control. And that should be the computer pulling it to negative. Um, and then the positive is just going to be 12 volts. And so it charges up in the coil, and then when it pulls it to negative, it allows it to fire. So... I think we're ready to look at this trace. This is a sample one. You can see like the, the charging time, the switching time, the firing line, and then some squiggles at the end. And we should see something that looks generally like this, I do believe. Um, so let's see what we see. We'll go ahead, come down here click on this run button I heard my little scope relay go clickety click and I'm flat now so now we're gonna plug this in and start it up and see what we have so we see a pretty good uh, pretty good waveform here so we're all happy with that now we're gonna scope the back one I want to see what this waveform looks like with the uh, coil unplug unplugged as well so, the connector is already broken on this one over here. So let me slide into this guy. This is going to come right off. And I see it has a good signal too. What does it look like if we just unplug this? It goes completely flat down. Okay. Which would make sense because it has no power. But we don't see the control signal grounding out when it's unplugged. And we're not seeing that because uh, we're set at such a high attenuation and everything. We're not going to see that. We'd have to hook up a 1x probe. To probably see that zero to twelve, or see it grounding, I guess. But that's fine. Um, let's just go ahead and scope this back one and see what it looks like. So I've got my probe on here. One thing to note is it looks like the green up here is the ground, the green wire. However, green back here is the control on this one, and the ground on all of them looks like it's black with a white stripe. <laughs> so. Um, based on the position of the pins. I mean, I can't see the other two, but based on the position of the pin, the middle pin's the control up here, so I'm assuming it is here too. And we're gonna see if this guy will fire or what's going on with it. So what we got there is a bad plug. See all that, that line's getting all short and and you'll hear every once in a while, you, I don't know if you can hear it, the, the engine will change and it'll hit. We either have a bad plug or we've got spark leaking uh, out of that coil boot. If it was a front one, it'd be easy to pop it out and check it. But this is definitely has an ignition problem.
every once in a while it does fire correctly. But yeah, we definitely have a coil slash spark plug problem. So what I'll do is get them a quote on replacing all the coil packs and plugs, but if we're tearing this apart, we're gonna at least do the three back ones. And uh, you know, front ones could wait for all I care because they're easy to get to later on, but uh, I'll get them a price on it, but that's what it needs. And so now I know for sure that I have an ignition problem. I don't have a fuel injector problem. I don't have to look for anything else. So that's where a scope helps you out so that you know what you're what you're going after before you go after it. Because once it's apart, you can't do any more troubleshooting until you put it back together. So, pretty cool. All right. All right, folks. So here's what it comes to for Iridium. NGK plugs are $10 a piece. I would do Iridium on that because you want it to last as long as possible, right? Good when you're tearing all that off. Uh, coils are for genuine Honda OEM coils are $47 a piece um, The labor is going to be 200 plus a one-hour diag altogether that comes to $592 for that repair so Unfortunately If it was one of the front coils, we just swap it out or whatever real quick and let them go on down the road But if you're tearing it apart, you might as well do them all now I also gave them the option of doing just the three back ones. Um, so while I have it apart, we'll do the three back ones and let the front go for now. But um, anyway, that is what it is. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Stop me, frugal prepper.